Uh, hello, Mount Mariah and friends. As we move into the month of July, um, I plan to do Bible studies virtual for this month. And tonight I want to talk to you all from the 32nd Psalm. Now, Psalm number 32 blessed me this morning. I woke up really, really early. And God had me reading in the Psalms. And as I read, I kept going back to this Psalm. And um, it pierced my spirit because the way the writer writes, you get the sense of how the writer fully entrusted himself in God's hands and didn't try to hide his troubles, but leaned to God in the midst of difficult times. And I want to read to you all Psalm number 32. It says, happy or blessed, whichever word you want to use, are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Happy are those whom the Lord inputs no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. While I kept silent, my body wasted away. Though my, though my groaning all day long, for day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of the summer. When I acknowledge my sin to you and didn't hide my iniquities, I said I will confess my transgression to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Verse six, therefore let all who are faithful offer prayers to you at the time of distress, the rush of the mighty waters shall not reach them. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with glad cries of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eyes upon you. Do not be like a horse or mule without understanding, whose temper must be curved with bit and bridle, else it will not stay near you. Many are the torments of the wicked, but steadfast love surround those who trust in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Uh, my brothers and sisters, this text really blessed me because uh, David is talking about how he gets joy in God's presence. And when God forgives his, his sins, he gets happy. But it also used this word. It says, happy are those whom the Lord inputs no iniquity and i had to ask my i had to spend some time this morning studying the, the the difference between iniquity and sin and what i found out is that iniquity deals with your attitude and your mindset towards that that god calls sin iniquity is the bitterness that you have towards others or worse towards God. And David wanted us to realize that 
when we submit our even our sentiment about sin over to God, that God gives us a clean slate. That we have to learn how to how to let God reshape our thoughts and our attitude towards the things that God calls sin. And when we get to that place where God says that I, that you no longer have bitterness towards me, or you no longer have bitterness towards my corrective action, then God finds that that, that that also removes deceitfulness from you. And that when you have no deceit and you operate with the right spirit, that God takes a gets joy out of preserving you. That when you try to keep silent and hide your sin, pain and punishment comes. But when you release it to God, God has a way of coming in and covering up your sins and your transaction. My brothers and sisters, I want you to know that confession is one of the most liberating things that the believer can have in their lives. That when you confess, God wipes the slate clean. That when you confess, God forgives. The enemy tries to get you to, to hold in that bitterness. But David is saying God wants you to release it to God. And when God forgives it, God leaves you better. And verse 6 he says, therefore, let all who are faithful offer prayers basically to God. And he wants you to know that if you are faithful to God and you offer prayers to God, when, try, when challenges come your way, God will come in and protect you. That God will come in and God will be your hiding place or your place of security, your place of peace, your place where the troubles can no longer damage you. And he wants you to know that God will come, that when that God will surround you with God's delivering power, that God will give you deliverance if you trust God. Then where David really starts to bless me is David talks about instructing or teaching others God's standard or the way they should live. And David wants to seek counsel in God and keep his eyes focused on God. And if we do the same, then we get God's we get God's perfect coverage. And David also wants us to not be like animals who have to be controlled by bits, but to love God and to know that God wants be what's best for us, and allow God's Holy Spirit to guide us. Um, David also tells us that the wicked will be tormented. But yet, if we learn to trust God, his steadfast love, and I define love as God wanting what's best for you, that God's love means God wants and has what's best for you if you just trust God. So David is telling us that if we, if we hold to God's unchanging hand, that God will give us a reason to rejoice because God brings joy. And God has a way of cleansing us. God makes us righteous by allowing us to be in God's presence. And in God's presence, God pushes anything like sin, iniquity, transgressions. God pushes all of those things that break the bond between you and God out of your life. When you are surrender, when you surrender to God, when you repent and you seek God's face. So the writer wants you to know that it's not about you cleaning you up, but that if you just put your trust in God, that his presence is that blessing that makes your life be filled with joy and happiness. My brothers and sisters, be blessed.